students, the first thing you should all learn when preparing for the ATP paper is the set of these six general rules because these rules are used in all ATP papers. So students, it's very important that you learn and remember all of them. Let's learn the first rule first. The first rule says, always state the value of a quantity along with the appropriate unit. For example, students, the distance between two points should be stated as 5.6 centimeters. Note as just 5.6 with no unit. Students, of all the rules that you will learn in this crash course, this rule is perhaps the easiest and also the most important rule because you can lose about two or three marks in your ATP paper if you don't state unit after the value of a measured or calculated quantity. Let's learn the next rule with the help of an example this time. Students, we all know that the least count of a typical meter rule is 0.1 centimeter, right? So a length of 2 centimeter measured with a meter rule should be stated as 2.0 centimeter and not as just 2 centimeter. Let me explain why. Actually, students, the relevant rule here says that the measured quantity should be stated to the same number of decimal places as the least count of the measuring instrument. Now look, here the value of least count of meter rule has one decimal place. So the value of length measured with a meter rule should also be stated to one decimal place and not to any other number of decimal places, right? Let's move on to the next rule now. We will learn this rule with the help of an example too. If distance t of 0 0.050 meters is covered in time t equals 0 0.0581 seconds and speed is given by the expression d by t, then calculate and state the value of v to appropriate number of significant figures. Students, let's determine the value of v first. v is equal to d by t, where d is 0 0.050 meters and t is 0 0.0581 seconds. So the speed comes out to be 0 0.860585 meters per second. Now see students, the calculated value of V has too many significant figures and it needs to be rounded off. But the question is to how many significant figures? Let's see what the relevant rule says here. The rule says that the number of significant figures to be retained in the calculated quantity should be equal to the least number of significant figures in the raw data. Now, in this example, students, D and T make the raw data because we use the values of D and T to calculate V, right? Now, in our raw data, D has two significant figures, 5 and 0. As these zeros, the leftmost zeros in the decimal value are non-significant. And T has three significant figures, 5, 8 and 1. Here again, students, these zeros are non-significant. Now, look, students, in the raw data, D has the least number of significant figures which is 2. So according to the rule, the calculated value of V should be rounded off to two significant figures, that is, to this digit. Now, if we round off the value of V to this digit, we get 0 0.86 meters per second. So see, students, this is how we round off the calculated value of a quantity to appropriate number of significant figures if the value is obtained by multiplication or division, right? Let's learn the next rule now. Students, we will learn this rule with the help of an example 2. If x is equal to 2.3 centimeters and y is equal to 1.964 centimeters, then calculate and state the value of x plus y to appropriate number of decimal places. Okay, students, let's calculate the value of x plus y first. x is 2.3 centimeters and y is 1.946 centimeters. So x plus y is calculated as 4.246 centimeters. Now, students, we have to round off this value to appropriate number of decimal places. Let's see what the relevant rule says here. The rule says that number of decimal places to be retained in the calculated quantity should be equal to the least number of decimal places in the raw data. Now, in this example, students, x and y serve as the raw data. And you can see that the value of x has one decimal place and the value of y has three decimal places. Now, as x has the least number of decimal places, which is one, so according to the rule, the calculated value of x plus y should be rounded off to one decimal place, that is to this digit. Now rounding off the value of x plus y to this digit gives 4.2 centimeters. See students, this is how we round off the calculated value of a quantity to appropriate number of decimal places if the values obtained by addition or subtraction, right?
students before we move any further i want you to understand and remember the difference between the last two rules that we have just learned students i want you to remember that we round off the calculated value of a quantity to appropriate number of significant figures if the values obtained by multiplication or division whereas we round off the calculated value of a quantity to appropriate number of decimal places if the values obtained by addition or subtraction okay let's learn the next rule now the next rule says that each column heading and similarly the labels of graph axis should contain both the physical quantity and its unit with a distinguishing mark for example forward slash mark separating the quantity from its unit for example students let's say we have to write a column heading for time intervals that are expressed in seconds now according to the rule the column heading should be t which represents the physical quantity time then forward slash mark and then unit of time second so see students the heading contains both the quantity and the unit and we also have a distinguishing mark that separates the quantity from the unit right let's run the last rule now students this rule is used to determine whether a quantity say k may be regarded as constant or not now to determine this we have to first find the percentage difference between two values of the quantity so let's first learn how to find the percentage difference between two values of a quantity students the percentage difference between two values k1 and k2 of a quantity k is given by the expression difference between the two values over average of the values times 100 now the difference between two values of k is expressed as k2 minus k1 and the average of the two values is expressed as k1 plus k2 over 2 so the percentage difference between two values of k is given by this expression now students whether the quantity k may be regarded as constant or not depends on the size of the percentage difference between its two values the rule says if the percentage difference between the two values of a quantity is less than 10% then the quantity may be regarded as constant within the limits of experimental accuracy let me repeat it if the percentage difference between the two values of a quantity is less than 10% then the quantity may be regarded as constant within the limits of experimental accuracy students this last part that says within the limits of experimental accuracy is very important and you should memorize it because in the actual atp paper when answering a question we don't state the rule as such rather we state our answer like this in front of statement we write yes if the quantity is constant and in front of justification we write the percentage difference between its two values is within the limits of experimental accuracy on the other hand students if the quantity is not constant then we write no in front of statement and in front of justification we write the percentage difference between its two values is beyond the limits of experimental accuracy students we have just learned all six general rules used in every atp paper so learning these rules will go a long way in performing well in the atp paper exam